My training is a combination of basic neuroscience uh, and medical uh, training, so I am an MD-PhD. And when it came time for me to do my specialty training, I fell in love with psychiatry. The, the way we think about it is an individual's responses to rewarding stimuli in the environment. So all around us, every single minute of every day, we make decisions based on what rewards us, what we want to do. Uh, we do some things because we have to do them, but at times we mainly do things because we want to do them. And uh, those things involve food, sex, social interaction, going to a good movie, having a dinner with, with a friend, and, and so on. In fact, an old uh, a professor of mine once said, uh, you are what rewards you. Just to emphasize the degree to which rewards shape every aspect of your behavior. Drugs of abuse target these brain reward regions, but they do so with a power that's simply not seen in the natural world. A person's response to money, sex, food is dwarfed by the response elicited in the brain by a drug of abuse like cocaine. And it's felt that the power of that stimulus, uh, which again is just not seen in the natural world, uh, begins to produce bad changes in the reward circuits as the brain attempts to adapt and adjust, cope with this unnatural onslaught. And in some vulnerable individuals, repeated exposure to a drug of abuse can trigger pathological chemical changes in the brain that begin to take on a life of their own and eventually in the extreme and it's not a black and white situation it's a gradual progressive situation where a person's life will be taken over to a greater and greater extent by use of a drug we know that drug abuse is about 50 percent genetic and that holds true for every drug that's been studied and that includes alcohol uh, marijuana um, nicotine, stimulants like cocaine and amphetamine, and opiate drugs like heroin or oxycontin, Vicodin, and so on. Now, 50% genetic is a very big number. That's more heritable than high cholesterol, high blood pressure, most cancers. So uh, these illnesses are very genetic. But the genetics underlying them is very complicated. Uh, unlike hair color or eye color, which might involve a few genes, or some genes like Huntington's disease, which involves a single gene. Uh, addiction likely involves hundreds of genes, even in a given individual. The idea is that by learning the nature of these chemical changes by which drugs impair the, re the reward circuitry, it should be possible one day to develop a new medication that would repair the reward circuitry and help a person get back to normal functioning. When I think of what we can do in the laboratory now and studying the brain, it's amazing to me. We, can, we have experimental tools that enable us to identify genes and manipulate genes in the brains of animals, which we didn't even imagine could be possible 20 years ago when I first started my research. We've learned an enormous amount about the brain over the last two decades, and we all feel that we are now obtaining the fundamental base of knowledge which can be used to develop new treatments. That the last two decades uh, were dedicated to building our building blocks of knowledge. Now we have those and the challenge is to figure out how to first diagnose these uh, illnesses like addiction and other psychiatric syndrome and to develop definitive treatments.